good afternoon. Hi, it's Muffy Clark Gill here, and good to see you all. I'm going to start and getting ready to start another wax and dye demo. So sit back while I work on my new turtle pieces, and we'll get started. And this afternoon, these are the photos I have from my collection that I'm working from. And they are helping me with my color reference. So I am, I have two weapons today. I'm not sure I'm gonna use both of them. This is, whoop, I drop it. This is my janning tool, which was what I was drawing with yesterday when I was doing all the details in the turtle. And this is my wax brush. So let's see what we got here. I think we can do a lot of this with the janning, but whatever we can't do with the janning, we'll do with the wax brush. So I'm gonna go back here now and dip, and I know you can't see this because it's below. This is my handy dandy wax pan. That's a drips wax. But this is my beeswax soy wax mixture. And I'm gonna, I have a tester here I'm gonna draw the lines with, but this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna start off here and do the details from where I died yesterday, because after I left you, I did a little bit of dying. And go. Some more of the details on my turtle. And I gotta do this to each one since I've got four of them here. And a little bit of there, there, drop there. I'm just gonna touch these up a little bit, give it a little bit of color. Now I'm gonna go over to this guy. Do some more here. And the wax stays hot but as it cools down, then it won't stick in the fabric anymore. So then I get stuck and I have to go back and reheat again. So I'm just doing little details here. It's not gonna be a lot, it's more color added. Do this again, check here. Yeah. The details on this throat. And this is part of my continuing turtle series that I've been doing because I've had a lot of requests for turtles. And what was really fun was this morning I was down at the Naples Beach and doing my Wednesday beach walk with friends when Maura Krause from Collier County Resource Management was there with a group of people and she had dug up a turtle nest and found a baby turtle that had not made it out of the nest. And she was able to pluck him out. And then I was able to do a little video of him trying, they're trying to release him, but the little guy I think was so dazed, he couldn't quite see where he was going. So we started to put him into the water and he started getting lost in the surf because it was such a high surf this morning because of Hurricane Laura off the coast, moving its way towards Texas. And I, I worry about you all in Texas because after having been through Irma three years ago, it's not fun. And if they tell you to go for high water and evacuate, please do so. It's really important because three years ago when Irma came through, this studio got tormented with winds that were 140 miles an hour. And fortunately, we had moved inland 17 miles and missed it but it was still not a fun time for anybody it's a little scary and not to mention the damage fortunately we had mostly down trees and very little house damage because the eye broke up before it got to marco island but it was still enough to send a big scare into us and made me really 
cognizant about storms and the damage they can do. So when we were letting this little guy go this morning, the wind was kicking up big waves and there were some surfers out there, which doesn't happen very often in Naples. Usually it's pretty flat. And so they tried to let the little guy into the surf and he kept washing back up. So finally, as we were leaving, the woman in charge of the turtle re-nesting, re-releasing, was able to corner a couple of surfers who put this turtle, the baby turtle, on the surfboard and paddled them out past where the surf was crashing in and got the little guy launched and hopefully he'll make it because so many turtles are hatched every year and don't make it. And we'll just keep our fingers crossed and hope he makes it to be a big turtle. So you can see here, I'm finding that it works pretty well today for me to use my janning in the, uh, the applying the wax along here. So I'm almost done with this step. And then I'm going to take a lighter brown dye that I made up earlier. And I have to keep testing, making sure my temperature is right as I play with this. And we'll go back and wax these cute little fishies. I decided to add fish to two of them just to give it a pop of color. So I'm doing this, two of the same piece because I made a template and laid the, the silk I'm working on. This is kimono silk. It's uh, I brought the silk back from my trip to Japan last year. So this is the same silk that they wax and dye and use in Japanese kimonos. So I thought I would experiment and see how the texture comes out with this. But. Uh, take a look here for a sec. So this again is my janting tool. I have several different ones. This is, I think this is American made, but I have some that are Indonesian made as well. I have all sorts of little toys here. And just to give you an idea, here's another one. This one is a double spout that I can draw two lines on, which makes it fun. This one's got a little bit thicker spout. call my cheeky beaky brush which is just basically a chip brush that dipped in hot wax and when I pull it along it makes a wonderful striation pattern just something a little bit different if I want to add some texture and I might add it later on but right now I just wanted to complete the turtles then I'm gonna work on the background <laughs> so our next step will be let me just check something here think let me just see if I can show you hi guys it's good to see you let me lift this up for just a minute and I'm sorry it's upside down it's just kind of difficult to woo this but at least you can see the waxing of the turtle see there's more of it so I'm going to put it back here again. And we'll get going again. All right. So now we're going to open up. my brushes soaking in water to keep so I can get as much traction out of them as possible because normally when I work on a piece like this I will wet the whole fabric but since I'm doing such fine detail work in these turtles I don't want to do too much of it so 
I'm going back here and ooh, that's kind of coated. in here now and take some of this dye and go into the shell. And fill in some of these areas. And this is normally supported. Normally I have a rail across here, but since I decided to take the risk and put two pieces of fabric on at the same time, I am holding these pieces up with what are called shinshi, which are Japanese support rods made out of bamboo. They have little spikes on the animal. I just want to hold it here. You can see here's some more of them. But I brought these back on the train from Japan last year and I had to be very careful with them because it was like taking my life in my hands that I didn't stab somebody. I had them well wrapped, but it was a challenge to get them back to the States and not get them confiscated by TSA. Fortunately, by the time I got to San Francisco, I was able to stick them inside my luggage. You can see, now we can start to see some more fun here. So I push the dye into the fabric. A little bit of a circular motion. I'm not going to do all because I've got to still go back and wet some of this. So I can thin it out when I get to the edges of the turtle. starting to look good. Go to this guy next. And we're going to get him on the neck. But I love these turtles. And they're a lot of fun. Get a little bit of this other side of this flipper. So I use my photos as my reference guide so I know where I want to tone my color and apply it. check out these guys at mcgilltropicalart.com and I also wanted to mention if you didn't see my newsletter this morning I am going to be doing a live art show and sale this Sunday afternoon from at 2 o'clock here in the studio I'm gonna have one of my friends along to help and we're gonna feature two of the guys that I did last week as part of what we're going to be selling so you get a chance to take advantage and see them and maybe purchase one for your art collection before I put them up on the website put prints up on the website but this way you'll be able to chance to uh, do an original which makes it 
unique that nobody else has it but you they might have prints but they don't have the real deal so you just mentioned you know I'll be doing a two o'clock Sunday afternoon and see how I what that so I'm gonna you know go back and do the same thing here I'm just wetting the silk with this brush so it'll give me some room to thin it out a little bit because the dye is a little bit thick This is the same kind of dye as they use for Japanese kimonos. So let me take this again. And I'm going to do some more brush work in here. And if there's interest, I'm going to try to get the uh, little turtle video up later. i just been pretty busy today because we're supposed to be going out we can make it on a boat cruise out to Cape Romano in the 10,000 Islands, which is about 25, 30 miles south of here. If the weather holds up, which I'm not holding my breath, we're going to try to go out and photograph the Dome Homes, which is a local landmark at sunset. And I want to get a picture of them in the water before they permanently vanish from the landscape because they are rapidly eroding and falling into the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll see. As I say, I'm not holding my breath. I, I should know in another 10, 15 minutes after I get done with this whether we're going or not, but uh, we'll find out. But meanwhile, I can still work on this till I'm ready to go. here, this guy's neck. And if you have any questions, just send me a direct message. I'm sorry I can't move myself around and come to the camera to get to you directly right now, but just just send me a note. You know, I, uh, I'm happy to chat and share techniques. If you want to do a video chat, I can do that too. But we're going to put some more in here. Actually, I'm going to go back and let this. Oh, I still have some dye on here. A little bit of color. I'm probably going to go back over this again with some pale yellowy, beigey, just a little more color when I put the fish in, I can go back and touch that up too. So for people who aren't familiar with batik, this is a very ancient painting wax dye resist process. It originated in the East. Uh, they found it in China. They found it in India. They've also found it in Africa. And when I first started doing batik, or I got interested in batik, it was when I went to Uganda when I was a freshman in high school and saw an exhibition of Batik art and got so excited I came back to the States and talked my Girl Scout troop into experimenting with melted crayons and written dye and gulf wax and we did our own batik. So the first batiks I ever did were actually from photographs I took with an Instamatic camera. I know it's dating me. Uh, from Uganda back in 1970 and the next year I did one of my first batiks and it was using crayon wax melted with the gulf wax so you can see I'm going back in here while I'm talking to you and wetting this again Oh, 
Oh, well, we're almost done with this for today. Let's see. Now this, it looks dark right now, but this is gonna dry a lot lighter. So that way, after it dries, I'll wax over it again and add an even darker brown to it. So let me bring the camera around again and you can see my results. Oh, hey Joyce, how are you? Let's see. I know, I'm upside down. Let me just walk around here. You can... But I'll turn around. You can get a right side up view. Meanwhile, you can see my studio as I'm walking around here. And I'll give you the close-up shot of my mess here. But you can see my wax pan and my brushes. So there are those, all heated, ready to go. This one is my stencil brush for people who haven't seen me stencil before. And let me cover over these guys. You can see them a little bit better. And you can see how I diluted the water in the dye to better show it up. And then you can see this guy too. So now I'm going to let the dye dry, and then when it's ready to add another color, I'll go back and add some more. So you can see, see the little fish and my turtle. And one last scoop. And I'm happy to say I'm Muffy Clark Gill, and I hope you'll visit my website, mcgilltropicalart.com. And my other website, Muffy Clark Gill. Oh, hi, jo Joanna. It's good to see you. And please, I'm going to, when I finish with this, I will post this on Instagram as well, besides doing the live presentation. So if you missed any part of this, you can go back and look at it. And uh, email me if you have any questions. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. It's Muffy Clark Gill, and I'm saying bye for now.